And I'ma tell you right now, me and Dumb C ain't never been to a Diddy party, motherfucker. Yeah. Thank God. You ain't gotta worry about us on them fucking tapes. All right, let's be honest. We didn't even worry about that. Ice Cube is somebody who never bent the knee for nobody. And that automatically means that he didn't bend over, period. So Ice Cube ain't one of the seemingly few celebrities who apparently never wanted to visit the famous parties, even after being behind the mic for almost 40 years. I mean, this is the guy who calls out everybody's BS, so probably the monstrous Diddy himself knew better than to test him. And that don't mean that he never had anything to do with Sean Diddy Combs. On the PBD podcast, Ice Cube was speaking about the history that he had with Diddy and about the reasons why he distanced himself from the music mogul. So I was in the studio with his stable of producers, and uh, I think we did some great music. Um, and, you know, I really, you know, really uh, kind of, you know, lost contact with him and, and, and really stopped. You know, dealing with Puffy around '94. Oh, yeah. Any specific reason? Yeah, I mean, you know, they was doing their thing. I was now, even though this was quite a vague answer, is there a possibility that Ice Cube was holding on to more information than disclosed? Now, probably not, since he then clarified that both of them was just too different from each other for anything more than a work partnership. And you know, I'm not the partying type. <laughs> you know what I mean? I ain't never been to a Diddy party. I ain't never really wanted to go, but I don't go to a lot of people parties. You know, that just ain't what I'm in it for. You know, I, I, you've been to one, you've been to them all. Now, how can a hip hop and rapper be the type of person that doesn't like to party? It's kind of hard to believe that Ice Cube doesn't also got a flashy kind of lifestyle. But we can say that regardless of his influence, he really ain't somebody who seems to care much about all that. He releases all the steam and heat that he's built up on the mic, and that's also apparent. Still, how could y'all be surprised by anything that happens in hip hop? And that being said, most of the celebrities that we can see today got a lot of security around themselves because of their status, and most of them got a target on their back. Cube didn't really beef with nobody for a while. He did got some things to say about the music industry's gatekeepers, one of which, as we all know by now, was undoubtedly Sean Combs, who allegedly committed a lot of his sexual assaults during auditions. This was confirmed by Houston attorney Tony Busby, who had this to say when naming places where the atrocious acts that he committed mostly took place. Although several of these events occurred at auditions, uh, many times, uh, especially young people, people wanting to break into the industry, were, were coerced into this type of conduct uh, in the promise of being made a star or in the promise of, of having uh, Sean Combs listen to their tape or even let them read for sure. Ice Cube also has some issues with his type of gatekeeper. Now, it's kind of unclear if he was targeting Sean Diddy Combs in any way, but his message definitely is interesting in this context. Some of you may not have realized um, that I'm not part of the club. And a lot of you listening to me right here, right now, you're not part of the club either. And what I realized with the club is what makes them so mad is when you don't want to be a part of their fucking club, that pisses them off. What club am I talking about? I'm talking about the club of gatekeepers that we all got to deal with. You know who they are. But there are things that Ice Cube said that we knew was about Diddy. For instance, a lot of debunk is happening these days. A lot of claims against Sean Combs turn out to be false. Even Ice Cube had some interesting things to say about all this case. You think he's being targeted or some of the stuff he's got, you know, there's credibility on what they're coming after him with the tapes and the feds and rating his Miami home, his LA home? Uh, I believe he's being targeted. You believe he's being targeted? Yeah, he, I believe, <clears throat> you know, somebody you know, has the power to pull the trigger to make, you know, this stuff, this domino effect. Now, y'all ought to know that Ice Cube don't defend Diddy here. He just means that a lot of people's using his downfall to their advantage. His downfall is something that's got to happen, and at this point, we all know it's going to. 
But the reality of the situation is that Ice Cube doesn't really know too much to really spill any tea about this. I don't know enough to even be able to to uh, be specific on any of this stuff. It's just all speculation. I just know he was cool up until a point and then this, this stuff started happening. From pink cocaine to passed out sex workers, we heard it all. A lot of stuff started happening, that's for sure. From victims who allegedly got nine years at the time of their essay to famous people being involved in these almost satanic rituals that took place during Diddy's freak off parties. Let us remind you that the horrific charges were additionally made on behalf of the 120 claimed victims who contacted Busby's firm to represent them. Busby claims that more than 3,500 people have contacted his firm claiming that they was victims of Combs. But after looking into the claims, Busby decided to represent 120 who seemed to have the strongest evidence against a music mogul. Now what about all the celebrities who allegedly was involved in these freak off parties? Even if Ice Cube never disclosed their names, we can all guess that he's probably talking about the likes of Jay-Z and Beyonce, who were seen as close friends with Diddy. The person who had a lot to say about these two was Jack Wyatt Wright, who on many occasions said that Jay-Z was a monster of the same caliber as Diddy. And Beyonce was also to be blamed for her lack of urgency and for the fact that she stayed quiet about all the things that she saw during set freak offs. Also, Leo DiCaprio, who according to Diddy himself, was always the first name on his party list. Then we got Jennifer Lopez, somebody who was in a relationship with Diddy from 99 to 2001. Someone who, according to the infamous Shook Knight, is bound to be on the tapes, which were allegedly seized during the raid of Diddy's mansions. Names such as Usher, French Montana, and Meek Mill also popping up a lot. Now, all of them allegedly had not only a professional, but also a sexual relationship with Diddy. Even the already controversial Smiths have been mentioned multiple times. But all these things that's happening and the world's crashing down on everybody, including in this case, Ice Cube's mind can be at ease. You know, because he rejected hanging out with Diddy. And that's not the only clear thing that Ice Cube's view of Diddy is all clear about. Puff Daddy to me is like a... Uh... What's them dudes who, who run the three ring circus? The, the, <laughs> the dude that come out and, you know what I mean? What's the ringmaster? Mm -hmm. I, guess, I guess he the ringmaster because, you know, he do it big and he always put on a show. Now, it's really hard to tell who really was the victim and who was the accomplice. The amount of power that Diddy had over the music industry surprised us all. From the alleged tapes which he used for blackmail and his twisted personal pleasures, the deals that he made by strong arming people into submission. Now one thing's for sure, he didn't act alone, but time's gonna tell who exactly is on the list that Busby was talking about. The day will come when we will name names other than Sean Combs, and there's a lot of names. Um, it's a long list already. Ice Cube unfortunately ain't gonna tell us that. Now, who do y'all think's gonna be on this list besides the names that we mentioned? Let us know in the comments below.